where each of the main party leaders made a statement outlining their outrage at yesterday's attack. The DUP leader was first on his feet. This is a moment of truth for us all. We all have a choice to make. On Saturday night, the challenge was issued. Today in this house and outside it, let the answer be loud and clear. We are not turning back. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry Adams said he spoke as a non-repentant Irish Republican. I want to extend my sympathies and the sympathies of Sinn Féin to the families of those killed and injured on Saturday night. This assembly is united in this solidarity and I join with the First Minister in his condolences to the bereaved families and I underpin his commitment that this assembly is resolved to work through our difficulties. There is, as he said, no turning back. SDLP leader Mark Durkin said the police needed full and unconditional support. An emotional David Ford said the outpouring of grief yesterday showed the real side of Antrim and not Saturday night's murders. The Ulster Unionist leader Sir Ray Jempe said events underscored his belief the time was not right for the devolution of policing and justice. And then it was back to normal business. Ken Reid, UTV Live, Stormont. Well, uh, coming up later, we'll be talking to Ken, as well as to the commentator Jim Dougal, on the implications for the political process. But first, uh, to our reporter Siobhan McGarry, who's in Antrim for us tonight. She spent the day talking to people there about the shocking double murders. Siobhan. Indeed, Paul. Well, the, the, the mood here this evening is of shock, disgust and sadness. All evening, despite the horrendous weather here, people have been coming backwards and forwards, paying tribute to the two young soldiers who lost their lives. And while there is a sense of anger, this community is united. United in grief and asking why. It's dreadful, absolutely dreadful. I was shocked and horrified when I heard about it. Oh, it's atrocious. It's heartbreaking time. Disgusting. The double murder here at Mazarin has sent shockwaves throughout Northern Ireland. People from all sides of the community laying flowers, paying tribute and saying prayers for the two young soldiers murdered here on Saturday night and also for the two civilians injured in the shooting. Friends of the young Polish man who remains in a serious condition in hospital light candles. This is my friend, and then now it's a hospital, yeah. And I'm going because the uh, two boys, yeah, British, yeah. It's so, it's so sorry, yeah. But what of the real IRA who carried out this attack? Where did they come from? How experienced are they? And what are they capable of? Just because they say South Antrim Brigade doesn't mean necessarily they're from South Antrim. They could be from South Derry. They could be from Greater Belfast. But is South Antrim a stronghold for the real IRA? Not necessarily. It's not, it's not so much a stronghold. They've been growing in places like South Derry. They've been growing in Greater Belfast. And the other factions, uh, Rugby and Iron, have been growing in Tyrone and Fermanagh. So it's, uh, it's mutating, if you like, this, this dissonant strain. They're still a very small organisation. You're talking a couple of hundred people, and, and they're very disparate. They have different areas, different command structures. There isn't a single unitary command structure, but um, they can pose a threat. And I think it's a mistake for people to say that they don't have a strategy. They do have a sh at least a short-term strategy, which is to bring down the power sharing government. And while Saturday night's attack may well have come as a shock to many, to others, it was no surprise. We had highlighted the concerns that we had experienced as a police service over the last 18 months. We have had numerous gun and bomb attacks on police officers. We've had aborted mortar attacks on police stations. We've had seven police officers who have been seriously injured. And of course, if every attack mounted by dissident Republicans had succeeded and, and had been a, um, succeeded to maximum effect, we would have effectively had over 45 police officers murdered. We don't want the military back on the streets. And I don't think anyone does, because that's a sign that we're moving backwards. However, having said all of that, if the Chief Constable asks for additional resources, 
from whatever specialist branches that happens to be within the security services then he should be given the right to ask for those security services so that we can prevent another OMA from happening. But the loss of two lives here at the weekend is too, too many. Something the people of Antrim are having difficulty coming to terms with. Just thought we'd moved on from this, you know, and there's peace back in Northern Ireland and this blows up just out of the blue. You know, it's terrible so it is that these things happen. Well, there's always the possibility that other things could happen. You know, we had problems before. Um, years ago, it could be in retaliation for it, you wouldn't know. That's the parents I feel for, and the other boys that were supposed to be the home to see the ones for the real thing. Just hope it's not coming back to the 80s and 90s. However, there's a steely determination here that the politicians and the people must pull together to make sure those responsible for Saturday's double murder are caught and the troubles of the past are kept at bay. Paul, the feelings there of some of the people I talked to today, others were much too afraid to appear on camera. And it's that fear that's very apparent, not here in Antrim alone, but right across Northern Ireland. A fear of retaliation, a fear of a breakdown in the peace process, and a fear of a return to a troubled Northern Ireland that most people here hoped they'd seen the last of. Back to you in the studio. Thank you very much indeed, Siobhan. Indeed, we'll be returning to you in Antrim later on in the programme. And uh, people in Antrim there are saying that they thought that this was the kind of thing that was relegated to our past. And as we hear that, we are getting reports tonight that a policeman has been injured in a shooting in Craigavon. The incident happened in the Lismore Manor area, and police say that there has been at least one officer injured. But we'll bring you more details as we get them. But with us in the studio now, the two junior ministers, Jeffrey Donaldson and Jerry Kelly. Could I just get a reaction from you, first of all, Jerry Kelly? Well, we said after the uh, attack on uh, Saturday that um, these people have been trying to kill uh, police officers or, or other people over a fairly considerable period. Um, they got, in their terms, lucky on uh, Saturday. We now have another uh, police officer injured. They need to know, and what today was about, from all the parties, and especially the party leaders uh, speaking in the Assembly, was to let them know that we're singing, in our own words, off the same hymn sheet, sheet that they do not have uh, any uh, support, and that they will be isolated, and that the community will isolate them, and that's, we will uh, isolate them politically. And uh, you heard the reaction yourself on, on news today across the board from uh, all the people that the people are not up for allowing them to do, derail the progress which has been made. The reality is that not all Republicans are embracing the stand taken by Sinn Féin. Well, that is true. But uh, I repeat that it is a small number of people and that they do not have uh, um, support. I, I, are they dangerous? Of course they're dangerous, and we have seen that. Uh, to the well, it of, it, it shows you that people can still act outside the democratic will and get away with it. Well, I don't know about getting away with it. Um, certainly, we have uh, two families grieving uh, tonight. We have other people worried about uh, uh, other people who have been injured. Um, it should be our determination that they don't get away with it. It should be our determination that they know and that the message is very clear, whether it comes from the DUP, Sinn Féin, uh, whatever ministers are involved, and that uh, there is no, they will find no sucker within the community. And and I speak as a Republican, um, uh, and for that and for yeah. that community and for the people who, who vote for me. Okay, um, uh, but I'm conscious that both of you gentlemen here are, you know, ministers in the uh, executive. Uh, can I get a reaction from you, Jeffrey Donson, to the information we're getting out of Craig Avenue tonight? Well, that's very close to uh, my constituency. Um, I know the area well, and obviously. Uh, this is uh, yet more uh, bad news. Uh, our thoughts are with the police officer who has been injured. Let's hope it's not serious. Um, but it uh, demonstrates once again that these uh, dissidents are out to commit murder. There's no doubt about that. And we saw it in the...